Hello and welcome to the video. This is the latest video in the series made with Ben and the team up there at 3DXR, a professional VTOL build around a 4 plus 1 configuration. Now, do check out the previous videos in the series. I'll put a link down below. But this time, it's to take us from where we were last time, which if you remember, was Ben talking about how he positions all of the pieces inside the model. So the Q pilot Q bindings plus the power modules where the GPS sits, how he does things like the pitot tubes to the next video after this one is going to be the maiden flight. And then probably round off the whole thing with a video on how you do VTOL tuning with Ben. So a massive thank you to Ben for your time and effort helping with this series and passing on your knowledge and know-how. I couldn't have done this without you. So I'm going to hand over to Ben in a minute. It is shot in a workshop environment, so do be aware of that. There is a little bit of noise in the background. I've done my best to try and minimize it, but it is a working workshop. So there are people around who are building VTOLs for his customers, so there may be a little bit of noise. But over to Ben to tell us all the tricks that he uses in RDPI now all the hardware is installed to configure it ready for the test flight that we'll do in the next video. Okay, so we're going to continue the setup of the MFV fighter. So previously we've assembled the aircraft, we've got the flight controller in there which has had the accelerometers calibrated, so that's one where we level each side. And what we're going to do today is we're going to check through all of those parameters and hopefully give you a bit of an insight into all the different settings for the VTOL aircraft. So we've already flashed it to Ardu Plane, so that is the firmware that you need to use for a VTOL. And we've enabled Q options, so that's the options that let you tell it how the VTOL is configured. Now the nice thing about this particular aircraft is it, it is the sort of standard layout, so it's a, it's a 4 plus 1 VTOL. We've got our quad set up and we've got a single throttle and we also have normal um, ailerons, elevator and rudder. So it is essentially the default setting for a, um, a VTOL plane. Now, let's have a little look. Let's delve into the parameters. So I always like to use the full parameter list. And the parameters that are relevant for quad plane are um, all the Q parameters, so Q underscore. And as we flick through this little list here, we have our um, tuning parameters. We've got all the settings that tell it exactly what it is. Um, so when we go into our um, first flights, we'll perform a VTOL quick tune using a script and a lot of these settings are going to be adjusted. We have told it information um, specific to this aircraft. So for example, Q angle max here, this is how much it can lean in the VTOL mode. So if we're in Q hover, Q loiter, loiter. We don't want it to tilt really far. We don't want the potential for wings to touch the ground. So we've restricted that movement to 15 degrees. Um, in here it's shown in center degrees. So that's what that's what it is, 15 degrees. We've also set a few parameters. This is Q assist altitude. Um, we've told it um, a speed at which it puts in Q assist. So if it drops below 16 meters a second. And We've got by default a frame class, so this one's a quad, so Q frame class here. The default settings work for this aircraft where it knows it's a it's it's expecting four multi-rotor motors. And the frame type is an X, so that's again the default. And we also tell it settings specific to the VTOL element of this aircraft. So we've got, for example, our battery voltage. Now the fighter here uses 12S. So a full 12S battery is 50.4 volts, and then we also set in the low voltage. Um, so these are specific to our setup um, that we've chosen. Let's have a look through some of the other settings and what else we can do to test at this stage. So let's have a look at our servo outputs. So I'm in our setup, it's a mandatory hardware and servo outputs. Now what this is gonna show us is what we've got plugged into what port. So here you can see we've got our port numbers here. Um, in this case of a cube, it's one to 14. Now the first eight are the main outputs, and then you go to auxiliary. So auxiliary one is actually nine, so it counts up from here. So what I can see from here is in our main outputs, we've got aileron elevator throttle rudder. Then we have our four VTOL motors on the auxiliary. 
So motors one, two, three, and four. And then because our ailerons, we've got two servos, we've just outputted a separate pin for that. And the elevator on this model also has two servos. So that one has been given um, pin 14 or auxiliary six. So we don't use Y leads, I always try and avoid those. So our ailerons and elevators are all individually connected to the flight controller. Um, we have space to do that. Uh, if you were tight for space, you may have to use a Y lead. By doing them in individually like this, this allows us to also trim them separately. So if you use the Y lead, it would be very hard to apply a trim in the autopilot. Whereas this allows us to trim those individually, which is very useful. And because we're in a stabilized mode, you will see these numbers here wandering, and that is the aircraft trying to stabilize itself. And um, normally these are set in the middle. If we want to test um, the direction of our ailerons and elevators, um, as you'll see here, I've already had to reverse them in my initial test, but let's have a look how we go about that. So from the main page, I want to put the aircraft into a manual mode. So we're powered on. We are getting readings. We've got our battery power. Um, we don't need to be armed to test the servos, but if we're in a manual flight mode, this allows the full pass through of controls. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna test the elevator and I wanna make sure it's also going the right direction. Okay, so I pull the stick back to go up and the elevator moves the correct way. Down, it moves the wrong way. And if I roll my ailerons so to the right, correct movement and the correct movement. If it were to imagine that was wrong, so when this was initially set up, some of these have had to be reversed. Let's have a look at how we can reverse that. So if I go back to the servo output screen and I have a look here, the aileron had to be um, reversed here. So if I was to untick reverse on the aileron, and go back. What we see now is incorrect movement of the aileron. So both of them are going up. So let me go back and fix that. So that was set up, servo output, and let's put that reverse function in there. Just a simple tick box and that's reversed. And let's verify the function. Excellent, that is now back to where it should be. So they're moving the right way. Um, one other feature which I've done already on here is the trim. So visually by eye, I've just gone around each of these control services and I've adjusted this trim in order to make them sit level. So if I was to put this out of trim, so I can see now in this case the left hand aileron has, is not sitting flush, it's out of level. I can push that down or I know it's about that gets it closer and I'll just slightly fix that in. Okay, so that's now level. Okay, so that's the servo outputs done and the trim set. So I'm happy all of these are moving in the correct way. Now we know the motors are plugged into the correct port, so auxiliary one to four. So what I'm gonna do is perform a motor test. That's found in optional hardware. We don't have to be armed or in any specific um, flight mode to test these. In fact, we, we definitely do not want to be armed. So we just go to motor test. What happens here is um, the motors, what we previously referred to as one, two, three, and four, um, they now become A, B, C, and D. And the, this is only for the test purpose. And this is to allow you to test the motors starting from the top right or front right. And then you're going to go around clockwise in terms of the test. So I'm just going to put this up to a throttle percentage I know it'll start and I'm going to work my way around. So testing um, motor A should be the front right if you were sitting in the aircraft. So motor's turning, the correct one, orientation's good. If I go to test motor B, this should be the motor behind it, to the rear right. If I go on to the next one, number C, this will be the rear left, and D will be the front left. So all the motors are performing as expected. If we did this motor test, A, B, C, and D, and they didn't go 
in a clockwise rotation as a test. So that is moving from the front right, rear right, rear left, front left, then you have them connected incorrectly. It does give you a prompt inside a mission planner to say what A, B, C and D equals. If you're using a hexacopter or a, an X8 or coaxial, you would have more letters down here. So the letters just increase down the alphabet and it would also test the same way round the clock. So we've tested the motors, so they work. The next bit I'm going to have a look at is that we have GPS and I'll delve into some of the GPS settings. So where are you using the Cube Orange Plus Autopilot and we've got a here for GPS fitted to this. So this is a CAN GPS. Now I can see, because I've already put in a few parameters that it is actually working. Um, we are inside, so we will get various errors because of that. But we do actually have sufficient satellites inside to give us um, a fix. And what we have to do from the default parameters in order to make a CAN GPS work, we first of all enabled all the CAN options. So we tell it we have um, a CAN one is um, UAV CAN. We also then have to tell it that the, um, the CAN driver is the first driver. You do have the ability to run um, two different CAN channels on a queue. So once we've enabled CAN on a flight controller, we then have to tell it that our GPS um, is not a normal serial GPS. It is a CAN GPS. So the parameter we're looking for is GPS and type. So let's have a little scroll here. So GPS underscore type. By default, it's on automatic. Um, we actually need to define that it has a CAN GPS. So in this case, number nine is a drone CAN and that will make it work. If you have multiple GPSs, that's where you can define GPS type two, it could also be CAN. You, you can also mix serial and CAN and different protocols of GPS. But in our case, we're using a single GPS, which is a here for, and we've told it it's on CAN. We also have an airspeed sensor. So our airspeed sensor is in the right-hand wing. So let's have a little look for the settings related to airspeed. So we also have to tell it um, the type of airspeed fitted. And again, we're using CAN on this one. So we have a drone CAN airspeed. So we set the parameter. What's nice about the most recent versions of firmware and mission planner is this handy little drop down. So the sensor is connected via CAN. There we go. We also tell it to um, use airspeed. So airspeed use. And we'll also do a calibration where it'll set the airspeed ratio. So that sets up the airspeed. We also have a LiDAR on this aircraft and I can see we are getting readings. So let's have a look at how that was set up. Now the LiDAR or rangefinder that we're using on this aircraft is a Benawake TF Mini Plus. So let's have a look at the parameters related to a LiDAR, or in this case, it's called a range finder. So I've just searched for range or RNG, and we've got, we need to tell it what sort of range finder we've got. So again, we have um, a range finder type. So range finder one type here, and in this case, it's um, 25, and from the drop down, it's a Benawake TFNE Plus I2C. There is quite a lot of options on the um, connection of range finders. There is also, if the products are available, the option to use CAN range finders, which are becoming um, more popular. So we've set the range finder type. We put in a few parameters to how far the range finder can work. So this one I know is a maximum distance of 12 meters. In this case, it's written in centimeters, so 1200 centimeters. We tell it how far it is from the ground and also the minimum reliable distance reading. And we enable the rangefinder for landing. And on a VTOL, what that means is it will use the rangefinder to slow itself down when it gets close to the ground in autonomous flight modes. So if you do an RTL as a VTOL or if you do a VTOL land, it will make sure the last few meters of descent are slowed down. And it does that by using a LiDAR, which is a more reliable source of height above the ground than a GPS. I'm also just going to have a little check as to our compass setup. Now because we're inside on a metal bench we are getting 
errors, but that's to be expected. But let's make sure we've got the compass, compass is all detected and also the compasses are in the correct order. So inside of our GPS to here four is a very good compass and we want that one to be our primary compass. So I'm in our setup and our mandatory hardware and compass and I can see that priority one, the first one, is connected by a CAN and I know that that is the here for GPS with the compass inside. So that has become primary. This one below it, number two, that's connected by I2C. That is the compass inside of the cube. Um, now the compass inside the cube is okay, but quite often, a lot of the time, people run power wires past the cube or there's, it's close to sources of interference. Now because of the way this aircraft is built, it is actually fine to use that compass. We don't have any high power cables running close enough to interfere. So we've left that one enabled, um, but it's quite often you will have to disable the secondary compass or the compass inside of the cube or your autopilot in many different builds. Okay, so that shows all the different systems we're gonna check inside before we then move out to do our flight testing. So we've tested all our control services are connected, that they move in the direction they're supposed to, and we've also trimmed them We've tested the motors are connected to the right sockets and also they spin at the same time to show our calibration is done. And we've gone through and looked at our sensors to make sure that our sensors have um, all connected and all in the correct priority where that's needed. We've also set some of the parameters related to the VTOL so it knows it's a VTOL quad. Um, it's in an X country configuration and we've gone through the parameters such as battery voltages and queue assistance that are relevant to this plane from the default parameters. The next steps will be to do an initial flight on this aircraft outside and then we will start to tune and refine some more of the parameters related specifically to this aircraft after we've flown. So there you have it, that's the stuff that Ben goes through to do the initial configuration and checks on something like the 4 plus 1 VTOL that he's building as part of this series. Join me next time, it will be the maiden flight, we'll see if this thing actually flies and if it does, fingers crossed, pretty confident it will, then it'll be a video on something called Quick Tune, which is something new as of Ardu Pilot 4.6. So I'll see you then. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.